Hey guys, finally back with an English video and today with some very interesting content. Uh, today's video is about the NVIDIA SLI bridge in detail, the NVIDIA High Bandwidth SLI bridge. So with the launch of GDX 1080, NVIDIA also announced a new lineup of SLI bridges. Uh, you might have heard it already and this is the new um, NVIDIA high bandwidth bridge and the big question for me was what is really the difference compared to the older for example flexible SLI bridge and especially what is the performance gain and what is the real technical difference. So let's take a look at this um, graphic which was released in the, SL, uh, in the NVIDIA white papers with the launch of the GTX 1080 and you can see that the recommended SLI bridge configuration for example for 4K gaming would be either the LED bridge or the HB bridge. So the, diff the question is what is even the LED bridge and what is the HB bridge and what is the real difference. So NVIDIA says that in the past you used those for example flexible SLI bridges and these run with a frequency of 400 megahertz. Now NVIDIA says they increased um, this um, transfer rate from 400 MHz to 650 MHz using uh, the high bandwidth bridge or the LED bridge. So what do the SLI bridges really do? So the SLI bridge is just a communication interface between the two uh, graphics cards. There is not really um, so much data um, going over this small bridge is more a communication interface. So for example if you have two graphics cards then you have uh, you have the master card and the slave card and both cards have to communicate with each other to make sure which card is for example calculating um, rendering which, F, which frame and uh, to calculate the frame output. So what could happen is that actually with a, fa with a higher um, frequency with a faster bandwidth it could be that it, ex uh, that it increases the frame time and also um, that makes the frame time more synchronized which could lead to a lower stuttering which could actually improve your gaming experience beside just increasing the FPS. So after the launch of the new HB bridge um, of course I was looking for some reviews and I was really surprised that some reviews um, stated that there is no performance boost whatsoever, that there is no change and then you have those other reviews which um, say that in some specific games like Rainbow Six Siege you have a game of like 20% so of course I wanted to do my own testing but before I wanted to do the testing I really wanted to know what is the technical difference between the SLI bridges and especially what's the difference between the older bridge and the newer bridge from a technical point of view. So what I did, um, I sent a big load of SLI bridges, uh, yeah, like a four-way bridge, the LED bridge, um, an old um, SLI bridge from ASRock and also the flexible bridge to a special um, laboratory and they did x-ray analysis for me. Um, so they did a special uh, PCB analysis. So let's take a look at this picture first. So here you can see the flexible SLI bridge. This is actually the bridge and this is a flexible standard bridge which was um, packed in the Rampage 5 edition 10. Uh, it's a very common uh, bridge you can find anywhere for a few dollars. On this x-ray picture you can see that there is the connector on the left side and then you have traces going all the way to the right which you can see here and the traces just go to the connector on the right side. So there is actually nothing on this bridge except for traces. So it's just a direct connection between the pins on this connector and the pins on this connector. Now I have this solid SLI bridge from ASRock. It's also a quite old bridge but let's take a look at the x-ray analysis. So again this is the left side of the PCB you can see the connector on the left and you can see all the traces going to the right and here you can see the right side with the traces arriving on the right connector. And in between you have all those small holes, those white holes, those are actually um, vias, so it's just a connection between the, uh, the top and the bottom side of the PCB. Usually if you have a ground layer on both sides you just connect them with vias and that's what you can see on the white, uh, on the white uh, small holes. 
Here is another very interesting picture. So the laboratory did not only do uh, x-ray analysis, they also checked the soldering quality of the SLI bridges. And here you can see those small red circles and inside the circles you can see some white spots. And those spots are actually voids inside um, the soldering area. So if you solder any anything, then um, the solder becomes liquid and when it's um, when the temperature decreases, then it's uh, becoming solid again. And because of the shrinking, you get some voids inside the material. And it's very normal and it happens everywhere, no matter what you solder. And it's also not a problem. Um, usually you say that you have to keep the voids um, below 20% of the volume. And this is what's actually okay here. So you have those small voids and that's totally okay. Nothing special and nothing to worry about. So my next object was the three-way uh, SLI bridge, also uh, again from uh, ASUS, this bridge. And you can see it in this picture here. Uh, so again, you can see all the connectors uh, with the pins inside there. And for example, on the um, right side, you can see the bottom right connector is connected with uh, all the traces to the connector on the middle right. And also, for example, top left, you can see the connector is connected from top left to to middle left. So also on this PCB there is nothing special, there are no ICs, nothing, it's just a direct point-to-point -point connection. You can see another um, picture here from the top and what's interesting here is that you can see all those small traces and even the spacing between the traces is not identical so there is no big tuning done on the tracing whatsoever and you can also see that um, if you compare the shades um, of this picture you can see that there are several layers inside this bridge so in total you have four layers and actually you just need the four layers um, to have enough space for the traces going um, from all the connectors to the other connectors. Again a picture of the soldering quality you can see again those small white spots which indicate the voids inside the soldering again uh, it's totally fine, nothing special here, so the soldering quality is also okay here. So let's go over to the more interesting part. Um, this is the NVIDIA LED bridge. It's also a solid bridge, but it's a little bit newer than the older stuff. And you can see it in this picture already, that it looks a little bit more difficult than the other bridges. It starts with the shielding, which is around the connector, and the shielding actually doesn't do anything. It's probably more for the looks and also for marketing, but that, that's not necessary. So if you take a look at the bridge um, close up, I will take a picture for you. Um, you can see there are two copper, um, big copper fields which are open and those are actually the connecting um, spots for the LED. So the bottom one is the ground and the top one um, is the supply voltage. On the left side you can see uh, two resistors for uh, to match the input voltage and also on the right side there is a small transistor but there's nothing special. Those components are only um, needed for the LED. They don't do anything like like no calculations or anything, no rendering. There is nothing like this going on. All those components are just for the LED for the look. So let's take a look at this picture. So on the left side you can see the connector and now you can already see that there is a slight difference compared to the older SLI bridge. So you can see all those hills inside the traces. You can see those ups and downs and these are actually to match the length of the trace. So what NVIDIA really changed for the high bandwidth bridge is just the tracing. So the traces all have the same length. Why is that necessary? Well, if you have um, a high frequency, uh, then it's more necessary to have the same length. Because uh, imagine you send some data packages from one card to the other card. Uh, if you have a different length in, tra in, in the traces, um, then you, um, the packages arrive in a different uh, time. And if you have the same tr um, length in the traces, they arrive at the same time. So whenever you increase the frequency, it becomes more important that the, the, um, the packages arrive at the same time. So that's, that's actually all NVIDIA did. They adjusted um, the trace length and let's take a look at um, the middle of the SLI bridge, you can see more of those uh, adjustments. For example, on the bottom right, you can see a lot of that. Also in the middle of the bridge, you can see all those parts which are um, responsible for the LED of the SLI bridge. 
So again, this bridge is of course a little bit better than the older bridge, for example, the flexible bridge, because it has um, a fixed trace length. So all the traces have the same length, but actually, that's actually all Nvidia did.